Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us for tonight's webinar on the 2020 Scout Recruiting Campaign. Uh, it's now my pleasure to introduce our Connecticut Rivers Council Vice President of Membership, Mr. Lee Hoffman. Lee? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, great. Uh, thank you very much, Kevin. So... I just want to say thank you to everybody who's here today. It is fantastic to see the attendance that we've gotten for this. I know everybody's got a lot of questions about how we're going to do recruiting in a COVID environment, but frankly, I'm optimistic and even excited to be beginning the recruiting season this year. Uh, I got into this because I was driving very slowly through East Hartford, Connecticut, and was attacked by a group of people with tan shirts and lo and behold, here I am today. But fortunately, we've got a fantastic crew uh, assembled to help out with membership. 
And I just want to introduce the folks who are helping with membership for the council and make sure that you all know who they are. So I got into uh, this because I was driving very. Okay. So uh, for each district, we have membership chairs for district one, the Western district, we have Christine Sedita for district two, the Charter Oak district, what was formerly known as the central district, Jimmy Moore and Steve Norman have stepped up for district three, the Northeastern district, John DeVenier, and in district four, our membership chair for the Southeastern district uh, being shared by, the duties are being shared by Rob Bunger and Tom, Tim, excuse me, Tim Lombardo. And then we have two professionals helping out with Ian Mullen and Sean Fogel. It's a fantastic crew and we're very, very excited to be with you guys tonight. And so tonight, just a little bit about what we'll cover. Um, as the agenda says, we're going to talk about the available resources for the units, what council has and what's available online. We'll also talk about the best practices for engaging in your community and how you can get the word out about what scouting is all about and what your units are for. Uh, also be talking about in-person recruiting events, how things might have changed slightly from what you're used to and what still works. And then finally, uh, something new for all of us this year, virtual recruiting events. And we're going to talk about that. But before we dive into the meat of the agenda, I just want to start things off with uh, hopefully some, some good ideas as to how to think about things. And so we came up with a top 10 list. So from the home office in East Hartford, Connecticut, the top 10 things for you to think about for recruiting. Number 10, pick the dates for your events. It's very important that you, if you haven't done so already, get those dates out there and let folks know what those dates are. Number nine, let the council know when those dates are gonna be so that geofencing can begin. And we'll talk more about that in a minute, but geofencing is a way for your unit to get free advertising. Top 10 things for recruiting. Number eight, get those dates out to everyone, everywhere, friends, family, social media. If you run a website, great however you want to do it, but make sure that everybody knows when your recruiting events are. And the seven, number seven thing to think about when recruiting, hit the social media feeds for community groups. Facebook has lots of groups. My town has three. We have the group with rules, the group without rules, and the group for people who are really angry about things. So feel free to hit those groups hard and hit them often. Item number six, flyers, they still work. So get flyers into the schools. Could be paper, at this stage of the game, it could be PDFs, but get them into both the elementary and the middle schools. We frequently overlook the middle schools, and frankly, they're gonna be people who are looking to do things in the outdoors and go straight into Scouts BSA, even if they're not Cub Scouts. Item number five, free advertising. Have existing unit parents post on social media and like and share the post back and forth. That way they filter up to the top of everybody's feed. You'll start to create a buzz in your community and things will show up on more people's feeds. Item number four, yard signs. Yes, yard signs. It's, it's election season and so yard signs are gonna be popping up everywhere, but scouting will be first with the yard signs and they're still effective to get the message out. Number three, Rely on the resources the council can provide for you. So council's got a bunch of resources and we're gonna talk about those next, but feel free to ask. Ask a pro staffer, ask your committee chair, all of those resources are available, just ask for them. Item number two, make sure that your pin on beascout.org is up to date. There's a contest actually out there that National's putting out right now if you update your beascout.org pin, you're enrolled in uh, potential for a gift card bonanza. So go forth and make sure that your pin is up to date. And most importantly, the number one thing to think about for recruiting, have fun with this. We're trying to have fun on this presentation. 
We've got lots of information jammed in here, but we want you to have fun with the recruiting process as well. Your enthusiasm is gonna be contagious to others. Uh, if you've got questions, feel free to ask in the Q&A or the chat down below. And with that, I'm gonna turn things back over to Kevin. Well, hey everybody, Kevin McClellan. I'm a field director, part of the field director duo with my partner in crime, Sean Fogel, here to support you with whatever you need when it comes to membership, as well as popcorn, questions about your unit, anything you need. Uh, we wanna help you out with that along with your unit commissioner, uh, Lee and the team here for membership. And uh, you know, there's just a lot of resources out there that, uh, that are available and we wanna make sure that you know both the people and the other things that we have uh, to support you. A couple things about me, I'm a, a Bob White, proud Bob White from uh, NE4154 Wood Badge course. I'm a Vigil Honor member of the Order of the Arrow. I am a Baltimore Ravens fan. Uh, so if you've ever met me in person, you probably already know, know that and I am a Pisces. Uh, so let's talk through some available resources that we have. The first one I want to talk about is geofencing. This will be our third year participating in the national ad buy for geofencing. This is a grant funded initiative by the National Office of the Boy Scouts. Uh, if you're not familiar with geofencing, it's, it's paid advertising, but it's based on proximity to a particular location. So uh, if somebody goes within the fenced area, they'll receive an advertisement on Facebook saying, hey, join Cub Scouts, here's what it's all about, or join Scouts BSA uh, because this is available for troops as well. If you have multiple events, uh, each one will be advertised independently with its own uh, ad on Facebook. So really exciting stuff. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention is last year during this, this uh, purchasing cycle, the National Office invested about $14 per event. This year, they're increasing that to $30 per event. And if you guys have ever done Facebook advertising, $30 is a huge amount uh, in terms of the number of impressions that the advertisement's going to make. So we're really excited about working with them on uh, the geofencing project. The big thing we need is uh, we need the dates uh, as quickly as you can get them because it takes about two weeks for the advertising cycle to occur. So we need some lead time on that uh, to get that process started. We also need you to pick the address for your geofence. Uh, so you could say you want it to be fenced at your meeting location and that makes sense. Uh, but it, let's say your, your unit meets or you're having your joining event on the outskirts of town, but it makes more sense to have the center of town be what is geofenced from so that you're getting the widest audience in town. Just give us an address that's in the center of town when you give us the information and that's where we'll put the pin for the geofence. So exciting stuff there. Uh, there will be a link that I'm going to email out to everybody who participates tonight. And there's also going to be a, a, a screenshot of that towards the end of the presentation where you can give us all the details of your joining event. It's going to tell us everything we need to get that geofencing process started. Uh, we also have printed materials available, just like in years past, if you've done recruiting. And again, you're going to see a lot of Cub Scout imagery, but everything we're talking about tonight also goes for Scouts BSA troops. We're excited. We want to see uh, troops grow this fall as well uh, through recruiting efforts. So uh, please know that this is all relevant for you as well. We have customizable flyers that your unit can use and you can find all of that stuff. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the BSA Brand Center in a moment, but there are tons of flyers to choose from. You get to personalize the bottom part of the front with, hey, come to our joining event at yada yada at this time. Uh, but you also have the back side of that flyer if we're doing a printed one where you can put information about your unit, uh, the fees, your, whatever your pack dues are, your pack calendar, you know, whatever you want to use, that's your real estate on the eight and a half by 11 flyer to personalize really specifically for your unit. We have yard signs available. The Cub Scout ones are now in the office and ready to distribute. I'm still waiting for the Scouts BSA ones and I'll let you know when they arrive for the troops to pick up. Uh, so as a reminder, all packs are going to get four signs uh, and troops is the first time we're doing this. So I don't have any back stock yet, but uh, you'll all receive two uh, free signs. And then for those who ordered the additional signs, we'll have those for you as well. Well, and I, again, I'll let you know when they arrive in the office via email, and then we can arrange the time to get them into your hands. 
Uh, for schools that aren't allowing printed materials this year, uh, or if they're entirely virtual to start the school year, we can help you with a digital flyer. We can use the same thing that you would use for a paper flyer, get it into an electronic format so that you know the school can distribute it electronically or you can do it through your network of parents in your unit to get that flyer out in front of everybody. So piece of cake to do a printed flyer and or a PDF flyer based on uh, whatever needs your unit has. One thing I'd suggest is get in touch with school principals as soon as you can to make arrangements and figure out what the flyer situation is this year. Ultimately, in most school systems, the principal decides what goes on in uh, his or her building. So you wanna work through that person and then we can also work through the school district to get the approvals if we need to. And then the last thing I wanted to mention is in your packets last year that we gave out at, the, uh, uh, at this, at the kickoff, we provided Cub Scout parent guides, which was basically an intro to what Cub Scouts is. It was an eight and a half by 11 folded in half. Uh, but what we heard through feedback was that a lot of our packs already have something that they've been using for a while. They like to use what they already have. And so in most cases, those parent guides that were pre-printed stayed in the envelope in the trunk of somebody's car until Christmas time when they had to make room for Christmas presents and then they got recycled. So we're still offering the Cub Scout parent guides. We'd be glad to print those for you, uh, but we're going to do that on demand so that we don't waste. Uh, so you just email me or Sean and we can crank out as many of those as you need, but we'll do those on request. Next thing I wanted to mention was some online resources that are available for you. Sean Fogel and I put together a recruiting page on the ctscouting.org website, so the council website, and it's on the screen there, ctscouting.org slash virtual-recruiting-page. Uh, and that's got some videos, it's got some documents, different things that you can look at and use for your recruiting event. And we're going to continue to add to that as we hear best practices from units, or we stumble across something that the national office has put out or another council is promoting that we think is really cool, we're going to put it there. So I would bookmark that page and go to it periodically, just to see if there's anything new that catches your attention. The next one down there is the BSA Brand Center. So this is where you can find posters, yard signs, um, flyers, door hangers, bookmarks, pictures, videos, all kinds of resources, and they're all really good. The way you get there is you go to scoutingwire.org. Along the top banner, you'll see something that says BSA Brand Center. You have to accept the, the cookies or whatever it makes you do. Uh, and then you have access to this wonderful series of resources that are really awesome. So, you know, high, high definition videos, lots of great pictures, uh, really good stuff on the brand center. The next one is also a part of scoutingwire.org. It's the BSA membership hub. And what that has is more documents. So it's more written information about what's available um, for you as a unit leader to, uh, to check out at the membership hub. So I would recommend again on the banner, BSA membership hub, really good stuff. All right. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about was uh, if you need help and support with anything that comes up related to recruiting or anything else, uh, there are a variety of folks who can help you out, particularly with membership. Uh, the, your district membership chair who Lee introduced, and we'll have their email addresses on a slide at the end of this presentation. Uh, I'd also encourage you to engage with your unit commissioner. Uh, and if you're not sure who that person is, get in touch with uh, Sean or me or your district commissioner. We get you hooked up with the right person. But that person is there to be a friend to your unit uh, and support any efforts that you're making towards, you know, membership or anything else. Uh, you can reach out to me or Sean at the Council Service Center. Uh, you've got my email address right there on the screen. That's the short version. Uh, and also Sean's available to you. Uh, and Lee Hoffman, our council VP of membership, he's new in this role, but is already incredibly engaged and uh, really wants to help you be successful with your recruiting events. Uh, so we really would encourage you to reach out if there's anything that comes up where we can provide support. You know, if you need advice on how to adapt or deal with a sudden change in a situation where you want to maximize your potential or you need to really quickly figure out a different way of doing things, just reach out to us. We'd be glad to talk to you and we can kind of talk through the issue and, and help you figure it out. But so those are some resources that are available to you. Don't consider that an all-encompassing list. If there's something you need, ask for it. Something different that you haven't seen before, but you want it, reach out, send us an email, give us a call, shoot me a text, set off some road flares, whatever it's going to take to get our attention. Uh, and we'll be glad to help you try to put that stuff together. 
Uh, so now it's my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, John Divineer, who is the membership chair for our Northeastern District, and he's going to talk to you about engaging in your community. Thank you, Kevin. Yep, my name's John Divineer. Uh, most recently with uh, Troop 15 in Thailand, previously with PAC 15 in Thailand. So uh, our PAC uh, had uh, some good years in recruiting and we learned a lot of things that helped us. Uh, we're a PAC of about a uh, hundred scouts and uh, in the past two years, uh, we've recruited approximately 30 scouts each of the past two years. So uh, a big part of that was uh, engaging the community and really letting them know that we were there. So we're gonna talk about that. One thing that uh, we found really works is a short promotional video. So they say a video is worth a million words um, and people join people, not organizations. So the way that that works with, in relation to these videos is that we're showing videos of kids they might know, fam, you know, families they might know, locations they might be familiar with, having fun, doing scouting. They kind of um, develop a personal connection to the video. It gets them excited about scouts. And we found that this really works. Um, it, what we were using was iMovie, uh, available on Apple devices and the trailer feature. Very easy to cater to your, your unit using still pictures and or short clips of video. Uh, and basically from there, we would share it on our internet site and social media. So we have a short example. Just a couple quick things about the video that you might have noticed was, you know, started off right away with our generic email account. So that's a good thing to put out there. People know how to contact you and it ends with, you know, the date of your event and the time. Um, and of course you would incorporate that in any text that accompanies the video. Uh, but, you know, it's a good way to just to kind of get people excited for what you do, show them kind of a quick overview of your program and get them going. So uh, the way this would work, is you would share these videos on social media and you should really utilize social media and all your recruiting. Uh, we polled new families last year on uh, how they learned about our program and uh, why they ended up joining and the majority of them cited Facebook posts. So um, as Lee had mentioned, most towns have pages for their town. I know Thailand probably has 50 of them compared to Lee's three. Every school has their own group. There's, there is the one that has the angry people, but there's a lot of other ones too for a lot of different reasons. Uh, they have open discussion and uh, talent resources and you know every kind of talent page imaginable. And we would just have people that were members of those pages uh, post information about our events. And not just our promotional video, but other things about scouting such as you know, 11 of the 12 people who walked on the moon were scouts. And we actually had a scout come to recruiting night. Um, and the mom said that her daughter wanted to join scouts because she wanted to be an astronaut. And she knew 11 of the 12 people who walked on the moon were scouts. So you know, these things do resonate with people um, to you know, point out what, scout, what the benefits of scouting are. Uh, another good thing to do is to create a public Facebook page. So a lot of groups, a lot of packs and troops 
have private Facebook pages where you have to be a member of the Trooper Pack to belong to it. But not a lot of them have public pages where, you know, if somebody's searching on Facebook can find your unit and find out information about it. So you could link a public page to your private group and just post information out there that's for the public to have, you know, about your events and good things you've done. Another thing that you should do is create a Facebook event um, for your joining event or any of your, any of your recruiting events and have people share that so that that shows up on people's calendars. And if somebody says they're going to that event, then their friends see that they're going and they, well, if that person's going, then I'm going to go too. So it creates that kind of snowball effect. Um, some other good things to know is just kind of look at, see when these posts are going to be effective. So according to a survey, they say Facebook posts are mo most effective between one and three during the week and on Saturdays. Um, and to make a point of just saying that you can begin scouting at any time. You don't have to start in first grade or second grade. You can, you can pick up the program wherever, uh, wherever they fall. All right. Sorry, Kevin. I didn't mean to go backwards on you. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> All right. So the biggest thing is just, this, this all comes back to being visible in your community. So, you know, being on Facebook, these videos, it's all about being visible. They can't join your, your, your pack, your troop, if they don't know you're there and they don't know how to find you. So you got to show that you exist in your, in your community. You got to show the good things you're doing in your community and you got to tell people how to find you and they have to be able to find you. So, um, you know, if you have a web page, make sure that that's updated. Uh, make sure you have a good way for people to get a hold of you if they're moving into town and they're looking for a group. Make sure your Be a Scout pin is updated. Um, some other ideas are on this page, such as, you know, providing bookmarks to your school or your library, you know, with your contact information. Uh, a lot of libraries and schools have display cases where they, um, different organizations will put material in there. Uh, an idea that we had, um, was to, to display like Pinewood Derby cars uh, in the display case at the library. Um, most school newsletters uh, are, are digital these days from what I'm finding and we would get into the, the digital newsletters. Uh, your, um, things like being at uh, meet and greets and open houses for the schools and just something as simple as having a sandwich board sign at your meeting place and say, hey, scouts meet here. Those type of things, just to show them that you're around uh, and that the good things that your unit's doing for the community. And with that, I will turn it over to Tim Lombardo to talk about in-person recruiting events this fall. Well, thank you, John. And again, my name's Tim Lombardo. I'm the membership co-chair for the Southeastern District along with Rob Bunger. I am currently, for the past six years, I've been the Scoutmaster of Troop 72 in Middletown. And previous to that, for five years, I was the Cub Master of Pack 72 in Middletown. Um, I, I, am, I am excited about membership I've, in, in, to show that I've, for the last two years I was actually the membership chair for the Matabasic Trail District so um, this is this is stuff that I think is really important and why we're talking to everybody tonight. I am an Eagle Scout and just to keep that tradition going in my family all three of my sons are also Eagle Scouts. So what we're going to talk to you about now is in-person recruiting events and more importantly how to conduct an event with social distancing, distancing protocols in place. So since we know that accessing our usual recruiting locations might be tricky this year, we're recommending a drive-through recruiting event. This way, all you need is a decent sized parking lot, some easy up tarps, tables, and information about your pack. We recommend setting up any displays that you may have in the center of the lot so that you know everyone that's coming through can always see what's going on. And this way, as the parents are driving around as well, the scout can be checking out all the things your unit has to offer from the window of the back seat that he's sitting in. So when you do this, you can customize the stations any way that your unit wants to. But we recommend the five listed on your screen. At the first station, the leader will collect the potential scout and parent's name and their contact info. 
a best practice with this would be to immediately enter the scout as a lead in my doubt scouting that way you can email the link to apply for your unit while the family is driving around to the other stations station two is where a leader can really get the family excited about your units program this would be a great time to talk about your activities that you have planned for the year and to provide a printed calendar. Next at station three, the leader will show the parent either a paper application or where to apply to, to where to apply at beascout.org. They'll want to walk them through how to fill it out and what the fees are to join that night. You want to leave some space between stations three and four so parents can park their cars and fill out the application if they're ready to do that. And that would be a best practice to, you know, to try to get as many of those applications that, that night as possible. At station four, the parent and scout will check out by turning in their application or requesting that a leader contact them with more information. And finally, at station five is where a family can meet their new DEN leader and ask specific questions. This will be an important station because this will be the person that, that their son or daughter will be interacting with the, the most often in the pack. From there, hopefully the family has made the choice to join your unit and they're taking that excitement home with them. With this format, you've created a way to cover all the stuff you normally would at a recruiting event, but safely, <clears throat> safely since participants never have to leave their vehicle. If you choose to engage in this format, there are some things you wanna think about for your, for your unit. First, you'll need to plan ahead for tarps because you don't want something to have to be canceled if it's drizzling that evening. And you'll need tables and chairs for leaders who are helping out. You'll also need quite a few leaders to participate. You'll need at least one for each of the five stations and then leaders or assistant scoutmasters at the final station to greet the family. If you don't have enough leaders to help out, consider reaching out to a nearby unit or reach out to your unit commissioner and see if they can get help from others in the district. The central display you have at the center will be really important. We can talk a lot about great activities, but there needs to be something that brings it all to life. A mock campsite, a Pinewood Derby car display, a rain gutter regatta going on, some kind of pioneering or things of that sort will really catch the interest of the boys or girls that are looking to be recruited. Finally, we need to engage not just the parent, but also the potential scout at each station. The last thing you want is a potential new scout getting bored. Think about providing a scavenger hunt of things in your central display. This will keep the scout active and looking at your display throughout the experience. I wanna provide a few final thoughts on in-person recruiting events this fall. This method is actually one that's been in use for a long time. You can easily do this in a park or at another location where you can easily fit five tables for each of the stations. The drive through concept this year is meant to help with potential scout families who might be uncomfortable with a more typical approach this year, but that doesn't mean we can't do in-person recruiting this way. Masks and social distancing are critical. We want to show any family that is thinking of joining that we take the COVID pandemic seriously and we put the safety of our participants above all else in the scouting program. Finally, have fun. Enthusiasm is contagious. Now we're gonna show you a couple of videos and Rob Bunger will talk about virtual joining events. My name is Carlos and I'm a Cub Scout. I'm here to talk to you today about becoming a Scout like me. Cub Scouts get badges for doing fun activities and we make friends. Scouts go camping, climbing and fishing, and swimming together. We play sports and go to parades. Scouts also help people and become the best versions of themselves. Visit BASCout.org to find your pack near you, get any questions answered, and sign up for Cub Scouts online. Hello everyone, I'm Zabretta. And I'm Selena Ray. Welcome to everything you want to know about Cub Scouts. Okay, maybe that title needs a little bit of work, but if you are watching this video, chances are you have some questions about Cub Scouts. That's right. And today we're going to talk all about Cub Scouts and answer some common questions parents like you have. So let's get started. Question one, what is Cub Scouts? 
I'm glad you asked. Cub Scouts is filled with fun adventures and making friends. That is what your child sees in Cub Scouting. For you as a parent, Cub Scouting aims to build citizenship, character, personal fitness, and prepares them to be future leaders in our communities. The magic of Cub Scouting is that it is a game with a purpose. Cub Scouts and their families participate in fun activities that are designed to achieve these aims. What may seem like a simple activity may in fact be a method used to teach your child about science or the environment. All of these things make Cub Scouting fun for the family while making awesome memories that will last a lifetime. Question two, who is Cub Scouts for? Cub Scouting is for boys and girls in the kindergarten through fifth grade. You and your child will be welcomed into a small group of other families who have children in the same grade to form what is called a den. Your den will be the focus of activities, get-togethers, and celebrations. All the different grades in the community form what is called a pack. Question three, what about meetings and activities? Well, depending on where you live, each den and pack schedule will be slightly different. Generally, dens tend to meet twice a month where your scout will make new friends, play purposeful games and learn new things. Then all the dens in the pack come together, usually once a month, for larger pack activities and events. Cub Scouts participate in tons of different activities, including games, projects, skits, songs, outdoor activities, trips, and service projects. Besides being fun, these activities offer opportunities for growth, achievement, and family involvement. Question four is about adventures. Once you join Cub Scouting, your child will start on a journey of fun adventures. In fact, adventures is what we call the different activities your child will do. Adventures in Cub Scouting are grade specific with content designed to be age appropriate. Adventures range from cooking, science, and of course, the outdoors. Many Cub Scout families also enjoy camping, but don't worry, you don't have to be a survivalist. Remember those small groups of other family members from the same grade level called dens? Well, each grade level is working towards earning a special patch. This patch is called a rank, and each grade level has a different rank they work towards. Kindergartners work towards earning the lion rank, first graders towards the tiger rank, second graders work towards wolf, third graders work towards bear, fourth graders work towards weevilos, and we know that's a funny word, and lastly, fifth graders work towards arrow of light. Yeah, and to earn their rank, your child will simply complete adventures with their den and no worries if you miss a meeting because as a parent, you can do most anything that may have been done in a den meeting at home. Okay, our last question is about cost. How much does it cost to be a Cub Scout? Like most youth activities, there are initial startup costs you can expect. This includes a registration fee, one-time joining fee, pack dues, along with the Cub Scout uniform, and your child's handbook. Now we know you might have some more questions, so to discover more about Cub Scouting, go to scouting.org slash program slash Cub Scouts. There you will learn more about the program and see the resources to get you started. So if, if you guys have never looked at the, uh, the BSA Media Resource Center, the, the, the assets that they have there, like those videos are fantastic. So I'm, uh, I'm Rob Bunger and uh, I, uh, I'm gonna be talking about virtual recruiting events. Uh, I'm a longtime scouter, um, grew up in the DC area and did scouts there, got Eagle Scout and up here in uh, Mystic, Connecticut, uh, Scoutmaster, currently Assistant Scoutmaster and co-chair of the Southeastern District for membership. So what is a virtual recruiting event? I think uh, you guys probably have a pretty good idea of what this is. This is an opportunity for your event to share information and provide a recruiting event for families that are not comfortable with an in-person event with strangers. Um, and the great thing is, uh, is both kids and parents have become more comfortable with online meetings. Uh, this is a really great time to leverage these, these platforms. All right. There we go. Now, so how do you do it? So the first thing is you need to pick a platform. And uh, most of the stuff I've been seeing out there is Zoom. Uh, most people can uh, grab, a, uh, grab a login and do it that way. Facebook Live is another good way to go. But the number one thing is to get, an, get a, um, 
a platform that you're comfortable using and that's also very easy to log into and i'm sure everybody's had some work meetings that have uh, taken 15 minutes to get started uh, because it's, the platform is not great so uh, once you have the event set up grab that link and like john was saying share that on all the uh, platforms that you have available from your troop website to facebook etc So making an agenda for the uh, for your join night is is very straightforward, and uh, videos like the ones we saw are a great way to start. And uh, you want to cover the you know key information in a short meeting is better than a long meeting, as I think most of you guys would agree. Uh, picking a dynamic leader is important. So it doesn't have to be the unit leader that's the, uh, the speaker on this. If you have somebody that's really good at giving presentations and it's pretty dynamic, go ahead and let them uh, do it. Um, show in your unit calendar for the year, let them know what activities you're doing, how you're engaged in the community is really important. And of course, where you're meeting, how often you're meeting, and then reviewing the fees and um, you know provide the link to your units uh, joining application and, and, I, and it's also important to be you know really stick to your agenda i think a reflection of how the units run and what kind of organization they want their child to join is going to be reflected in you know how you how you run the meeting so that's going to be important so um some considerations for your virtual recruiting um, you know, we've never encouraged units to try to recruit in this way before, so it's really all new to us. Uh, but with the pandemic and its effect on everything in person, we believe uh, this is an important tactic uh, to reach more potential families. You know, so give it a whirl. And in fact, I'll, I'll even say that although I was uh, arbitrarily chosen to talk about this, you know, I think, uh, uh, you know, Tim talked about in person. I'm talking about virtual. I think the virtual is going to do better than the in-person. So, so Tim, I think we'll see how uh, how uh, the topic that I'm covering uh, will perform compared to your in-person one. So we'll maybe make a wager on that. Now, with this being a new strategy, we don't really have any idea to how well it will work. Uh, we do know that through the research, the majority of adults between 35 and 50 have regularly used Facebook. Um, and so we know that kids and parents have been forced into these never ending meetings uh, since March. So um, uh, we do believe these will be successful. And um, you know, the great thing is, is that the time commitment for, for folks to come and go to a virtual recruiting event is, is pretty low. So the bar is low. So you might end up getting more people, you know, popping on to an information session and a join night uh, than you might, you know, go and drive somewhere. So as I mentioned before, uh, keeping your event short is really important. Um, and uh, without the ability with, you know, two-way engagement in person, you know, uh, you know, the patience of folks are gonna be short-lived. And uh, finally, I'll say that uh, immediately follow up with the participants is very, very critical. Uh, because of the lack of face-to-face -face interactions, new scanning families and those considered joining will need to have that two-way interaction right away so that they stay engaged and get to the first meeting as quickly as possible. So now I'd like to pass the presentation back to Lee. Thank you again, Rob. Really appreciate that. And thank you to everybody who spoke and to all the Q&A that's going on in the chat. Um, and want to thank everybody for having come tonight and spent time on yet another Zoom after you've probably been doing that all day at work. But uh, just before we just before we wrap things up, just want to take a couple more minutes and talk about where you can go from here. Um, with so much that's going on this year with recruiting, I know that even after this presentation, we've gotten some questions in in the in the chat box and everything else. So, what can council do? to help you recruit new families. Some of the tools and resources we're ready to provide include setting up the geofencing for you so you don't have to worry about that and it's already paid for by national, doing the yard signs. If you give Sean and Kevin enough time, they can do print flyers for you, parent guides and the like, also training and advice. And the reality is that a lot of this is up 
on our website. So if you if you need to if you need to refer to stuff, you can go there and do it as well. Um, but I want to leave you with just a couple of really key points to remember as you go forth and do this. Uh, the most important thing is as you're looking to do what's next. The most important thing is to select the date, time, and location for your joining event if you haven't done that already. Um, in order to set up the Facebook advertising, get the flyers ready and everything else, we need a couple of weeks to make that happen. So the sooner you get that information into council, the better. Um, and as we've discussed earlier, we're gonna send out a follow-up email with a link to the various resources. So you don't have to furiously write down every website if you don't want to. And included in that email will be a link to submit your joining night details. And that'll trigger setting up the Facebook ad and start flyer generation. And I'd like to leave you with a, with a couple of other ideas. One thing is one of the most powerful marketing tools that you're ever going to see is absolutely free to you. And that's endorsements. Talk to the families that are in your unit already and ask them to post on social media about the joining events and about your Packer troop generally. Um, you know, if somebody needs a recommendation for a plumber or a roofer or a babysitter for their kids, the first thing they do is ask their friends who they trust. And it's no different with extracurricular activities. So if you see your friends uh, and their children are engaged in something, you're naturally gonna gravitate that way and it works in reverse. So if there's one silver bullet to recruiting, it's that. The, the second thing is that I just wanna leave you with is it's gonna take a couple of touches to break through the white noise that is this year. So just remember, there's a rule in marketing that it's eight touches until you get a successful close. So be aware of that. And just remember that the yard sign is a touch. The Facebook post is a touch. Everything is a touch. So eventually you work up enough brand recognition that people want to be at your unit. And then finally, um, I, uh, both, both uh, Tim and Rob mentioned it, but you do want to follow up with people if they've attended your joining night, if they've attended your virtual recruiting night, they're interested in the unit, they're interested in scouting, but they're going to respond to the ask. They're gonna respond if you say, hey, what else can I tell you? We'd really like you to join. Everybody wants to be wanted. And so make sure that you make that final touch and just say, what else can I tell you? How can I get you the paperwork in your hand or the, the link in your email so that you'll join our unit because we'd really like to have you. And there is a link at the bottom of this slide. If, uh, if you use that link, and we'll also email it to you, you can go through the very quick form and you'll get your geofencing information taken care of and the power of Facebook advertising will be working for you. And then I, I promise you it's, it's the second last slide tonight, but we're gonna leave this slide up for a little while. Um, email addresses for everybody who's involved in in recruiting and membership at the district level and at the council level. So Christine in the Western District, Jimmy and Steve in the Charter Oak or Central District, as it used to be called for all of two months, John in the Northeastern District and Rob and Tim in the Southeastern District. And then my email address is there. Feel free to, to drop me a line. I sleep with my phone under my pillow at night, so I will get your email right away. Kevin and Sean are also there to help out. So take a moment and copy down the email addresses of who's ever in your district and with council. And with that, we're gonna wrap up tonight's presentation. I can't say thank you enough, not only to the folks who are on the committee and who helped make this possible, but to all of you. You guys are the ones, you spent your hour this week with us talking about membership because scouting only takes one hour a week. Um, but you're really, you're really doing your level best to make scouting possible for the next generation. And this is going to create the opportunities for our kids to learn, grow, and have more normal, quote unquote, social interactions than they might have been otherwise. To do that in a safe environment. And frankly, we're about the outdoors, so it's a good look for us. And so I just want to say thank you again. And uh, I see that the chat box is blowing up with questions and hopefully we're, we're answering them. 
I know that this is uh, this information will be out on the council website as well. So thank you all very much. Thanks, Lee. We'll uh, stick around and keep answering questions for a few minutes. Uh, but if you don't have any questions, uh, have a great night. Appreciate you coming and participating with us.